Hello and welcome to Spazzerock.it and uh, welcome to Italy. Hello, thank you. Your latest album came out in 2009. Are you now preparing the new stuff for the new album? Uh, yeah, we already have it written and recorded. So, uh, got went in about April 15th and we got done recording at May 17th or so. So it's already it's just waiting for it to get mixed and it comes out in February next year. Can you tell us whether there will be difference in the sound uh, in the new album? Uh, no, there's not much experimenting going on. Uh, it's just a little bit of a notch up on the technicality level, I think. And uh, it's definitely more uh, metal, I would call it, than the Pray For Villains album. Where do you take inspiration for your lyrics? And who is the main writer of them? Uh, Dez writes all the lyrics. And... Um, so you'd pretty much have to ask him about his inspiration, but I know he gets a lot of stuff from from movies and and uh, a lot of books he reads on like witchcraft stuff like that. He's into the darker side a little bit, and um, musically we write all the music. And uh, uh, I don't know really know what inspires us. Just to kind of top our last album is what we constantly you know goal constant goal to try and do. You are known for the aggressiveness put in your shows. What's the secret uh, in being uh, so powerful on stage? Uh, there's no secret really, you just gotta give it 100% I guess. That would be the, the best secret I could think of. Because uh, no one wants to watch a band that's just seems uninterested, you know? So give it your best and hopefully get the best reaction you can. So this year you are going to play in the Odds Fest. How does it feel to play in an amazing lineup, including Ozzy Osbourne, Rob Alford, and many, many others? It's 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 actually a strange feeling, you know. Um, I just listening to Motley Crue is for my whole life, so it's pretty uh, surreal to think you're going to be on the same stage as them or in the same catering room. You know, it's like seeing your childhood heroes on the same level, the same stage, it's kind of crazy. As much as it would be, I would say, like meeting a movie star or whatever, someone you're really into, same thing. You tour pretty much around the world and you're becoming pretty popular. So I wonder how, how do you cope with popularity and with criticism? I don't think there's, there's no coping with popularity. I think it's just a good thing. You know, it's not something you have to really cope with. Um, and criticism, uh, I find it probably the most entertaining part of being in a band. Um, reading a really bad review is a lot more entertaining than reading a really good one, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It's, uh, it's just funny to, you know, you put your heart and your soul to it, so you, you know you did your best and you know, you, you know, that you're worth a damn, you know, but if someone just hates you, they just hate you, so it's just, it's just funny to see someone's total obliteration of your project. It's like, all right. It's, uh, it's the other side of the coin. I find it pretty uh, interesting to read. These months were filled with many, many deaths. Starting from The Rev, from Avengers Seven Falls, then Pete Steele, Ronnie James Dio. Would you like to share with us uh, any memory about one of them? Um, I've met all three of them and not friends with all any of them but had the, come across their paths a couple times and every single one was just a nice handshake. Beautiful people and all beautiful talents. Uh, I especially was really into Jimmy Sullivan's playing as a drummer. I thought he was doing, had a different style, a different groove than most people around what, you know, around today. I thought he had a, a really unique approach to what he was doing. Peter Steele's kind of a legend. He's an infamous just human being, just when he stands there, you know. Him, his, his presence alone was kind of infamous. And I got a couple times to meet him, I was more frightened than, because uh, <laughs> he's a big man. And, uh, but he was just a total sweetheart. And the same goes as Ronnie James Dio, just, you know, that guy could blatantly not give a fuck about me or, but he locked eyes and made it a point to, hey, I am paying attention to you right now. and. And, and you know, made it kind of known to make me feel better. It was cool. Is there any great artist you'd like to work with? Tons, yeah. Um, 
Uh, I'd really like to do something not metal, like with someone like DJ Shadow or something. I think he's cool. All right, uh, we have done. Thank you for your time. And now, if you want to leave a message to your fans and special rock users, look at the camera. Think for yourself and uh, do what you want in life, because I did. And um, it got me to where I wanted to go. <laughs>